In this video I talk you through the recipe that I'm using to make wild fermented elderberry wine using traditional folk methods that your great grandmother would have known. First harvest your elderberries. I harvested many more here than I need and the rest will go in the freezer for use in other projects like jams and syrups throughout the season. You need 1.1 kilograms of elderberry for this recipe. I also picked up some blackberries and some apples which were also ripe at this time of the year. You will need a large fermentation jar so this is a four litre jar um, as well as a demijohn so I managed to get a four litre jar and a five litre demijohn which is slightly out of sync but we will top up the remainder with extra water. You will also need 100 grams of sulphide free raisins that will provide the natural yeast to get your fermentation started. The other source of the natural yeast in wild fermentation is from yeast spores in the air. So we just use a wide mouth fermentation jar which we cover with a piece of cotton cloth and a rubber band which will allow the spores to come down um, into the liquid but prevent any debris from falling into your wine mixture. Along with your demijohn you will also need a bung with a hole in it which will allow you to put the air bubbler in. So an air bubbler it gets filled with water and you basically um, put this in the top of the bung. The air travels up from the bubbles released by the fermentation process through the liquid held within the in the bubbler and then comes out through the top. This means that your demijohn won't explode from all the gases being released by the fermentation process. The next step that we need to consider is preparing our elderberries. So when we forage them, I've brought them home straight on the panicles this time rather than separating them before so that I can show you in this video how you would go about separating them. So I tend to just use my fingers and just pull them off and I can just give them a sort of rough teasing off like this. Um, now, this is my preferred method because I tend to get down and dirty with it and I don't really mind about getting absolutely covered in elderberry juice but a lot of people prefer to use fork tines for this Now these little red and any green ones that you find on the stalks, they're not really ripe, so we don't really want those to go into our bowl. So you can also pick them out of here at this stage. I'm not going to be overly concerned during this project because everything is going to ferment together and the um, skins and bodies and things are all gonna be taken out anyway. So it's really just the juice that's going to go in. And so the, the odd um, green or red berry, if you see just how, many blackberries there are the, the concentration of them is going to be minimal so i'm not overly concerned about that but you can pick them out and they're not really edible but what you really want to make sure you remove is the stalks because the stalks can give you stomach upset if you do eat them so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to prepare all of the elderberries in this bag into my bowl so that i'm ready to start measuring out the quantities that i need for my recipe now I need to measure out 1.1 kilograms of elderberry into the bowl on my scale, to which I will add 100 grams of the sulfite-free raisins, which will be used as the basis for the yeast for our wild fermentation. Aiming for a total of 1.2 kilograms of fruit as the base of our wine. To the fruit we will add two litres of cold water, we will then take a potato masher and mash the fruit together to help open up the berries and get the juice blending with the water throughout the fermentation process. Next we transfer the fruit pulp and liquid into our fermentation jar. I like to transfer the fruit pulp first and then pour the rest of the liquid in later just to make things easier and cleaner. I'm going to use a stick blender here as the holes on my potato masher were so far apart I don't feel they made actually much of an impact in terms of mashing the fruit into a pulp. Next I'm going to add an additional litre of cold water which is all of the water I'm going to add at this stage as when I add the sugar I will want to add more water to the mix. And finally I will add my cotton cloth and rubber band which will stop any debris from falling into my wine mixture as it does its first three days of fermentation but will allow wild yeast spores from the air to drop into the mixture and help with our wild fermentation. This is necessary because we're not going to be adding any man-made manufactured 
or store-bought yeasts into the mix. We're doing this the old-fashioned way. You then place your wine mix in a place where it will stay at a solid 21 degree temperature for three days. After the first three days of fermentation, we strain off all of the fruit pulp, leaving just the liquid behind. This part of the project can take some time and some elbow grease. Next we add one kilo of sugar. This is roughly the same quantity as the fruit that we added. You can add more or less if you want it to be drier or sweeter. Then we add our liquid mixture and stir thoroughly until all of the sugar is completely and utterly dissolved. You want to make sure that there's no white film at the bottom. Then recover the jar and leave for a further three to four days at 21 degrees. At this stage you should be able to see plenty of bubbles rising to the surface which shows that fermentation is well and truly started. You need to make sure this has happened before moving on. You'll now need your 5 litre demijohn and a piece of flexible tubing to act as a siphon along with a syringe that you can use to get the siphon action started. First put one end of the tube right down into your liquid wine but not as far as the bottom. You want to avoid any scum that's um, floated to the top and you want to avoid any sediment that's settled at the bottom. You want to attach that with a rubber band. If you don't attach it with a rubber band you will end up with wine everywhere which I did several times before this take so don't do that. Make sure you put a rubber band on. Then attach the syringe and create some suction which will get the siphon action going. You need to have the wine in your fermentation jar up high and your demijohn down low so that you can drain the liquid from one to the other. The important part of this um, siphoning action is that the hose that's in the top jar sits between that layer of sediment that is at the bottom and any scum that has floated to the top. You will get yeast scum. Um, and any spores and things like that that settle on the top of the, um, the wine and you want those to rise to the top. So that's why we do this racking process. Then fill up to the neck of your demijohn with clean cold water. This is important because fermenting alcohol is an oxygen free process so you want to remove any air from this demijohn at this stage. Next you want to add the bung with your bubbler in at the top. So you want to make sure you push the bung in so that you get a very good airtight seal, including the seal between the bubbler and the bung. The bubbler is an airtight pressure valve that needs to be filled with cooled boiling water. This allows air that is released by bubbles from the fermentation process to escape without a build up of pressure exploding your demijohn. You now leave this for four to six weeks until the bubbles stop at 21 degrees. At which point I will make a part two of this video series covering how to prepare glass bottles and bottle your finished wine.